such a great segue into what I'm going to talk about in terms of the human, being human and being a voice. Richard, you like my extra title up there, driver? Did you? Okay, that was for you. Um, but seriously, and I'd be happy to talk about it at lunch, but in my company, we tell our story, and we tell our story about who we are and um, where, who we want to be, not necessarily tell a story the way the client thinks we ought to be. And we live in North Conway, and that was a very conscious lifestyle de decision, is to locate an ad agency in North Conway. And people look at me, most of our clients are outside of the area, do you have running water and electricity? And how can you run an agency in North Conway? Well, we very much made a lifestyle choice. But consequently, I'm a driver. I drive everywhere. Drive, drive, drive. I do drive a little too fast, so I use my GPS now as a speedometer regulator. It's the kind that posts the posted speed limit rather than um, me going on my own. But anyway, um, so I'm this one. Okay. Whoops. So anyway, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the art of fearless storytelling. And storytelling is your story, your brand versus your story, story versus your brand. Quite honestly, brand is marketing speak. It's an ad agency term that we say, Ooh, let me sell you a brand. But truly, at the end of the day, speaking like C.C. Chapman said, it's human. It's your story. Everybody... Every single person in this room has a story. Every business, every product, every service. Every single one of you. And we hear from clients, ah, I'm not sure what my story is. Well, that's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes here. Your story is unique. It's unique. It's remarkable. It's remarkable because it's yours. You own it. And it's memorable. That's the great thing about storytelling and telling your story is it's memorable, it's engaging, it's enjoyable, it's a journey. So, it is the one single reason, your story is the single compelling reason to choose your business or your product or your service versus another. It's the reason that we walk across the street to go to your business. This is the reason we walk there versus the business on the corner. It's also the reason why we pay more for your product, your business, your, your service. Because you've made a connection with us. By telling us your story, you've made a connection. And as consumers, we buy, we make a decision to buy purely emotional. We may rationalize it, we're buying it because, and here's the rational reason, but truly, deep down, it's emotional. So we had a little discussion in our shop about what would you pay more for? What would you walk across the street? Money's no object. And you'd see the yin and the yang between the male and the female here. So in my shop, we got top billing the girls. However, I would wear the shoes driving that car. So, but, um, and your story paints a great picture. It's just, it's a beautiful canvas that you put this story on and it's compelling. If you look at it, you go, yep, that's it. That's my story, now let me share it with you. And it makes a promise. When I'm going to, as a consumer, and I'm going to walk across the street, you've made me a promise with your story, and I can't wait to get there. In fact, I'm probably not going to walk, I'm going to run. And then it becomes perfectly clear what that story is. It becomes clear to you, and it becomes clear to your consumers. So, and here is what we hear, my story, my story. We get so embroiled in our day-to-day -day as business owners, or working in the business we do if we're gonna start up a business, we can't see that proverbial forest through the trees because we're answering the phone and servicing a customer and fixing the oil burner. There's my proverbial forest through the trees. So here's the key, and you have heard this over and over today, but passion is the foundation. There is a passion, there's a reason that you got into this business, or you're thinking about starting the business, or you joined this company to begin with. That's the foundation of your story. It really is that simple. It's a passion, it's why you wake up every day and say, you know, I can't wait to go to work. If you don't say that, it's time for a new job. That's a whole other topic. Um, so, and sometimes we fulfill a need with our business. And I just love this. It's like the ultimate in Nathan's has a lock on this need for this, but anyway. Right. This is fun. Um, and, so let's talk about the development of a story. What are the key elements? 
that's going to a story. Now, let me back up. We've had challenging times these last few years. So you may be in a position, either you've got your story nailed, you know it, or you're, okay, I'm gonna start right now and tell my story, or my story's a little tired, I'm not, I'm, that's not where I wanna be anymore. And that's okay too, is to evolve your story, particularly where we've come from and where we're going. A dramatic example is because I'm in advertising, so we're always dramatic, but this actor, you know, and there's all sorts of theories about he's weary of his character, so made some bad decisions about and reinvented himself. This is another one, a classic. This company was founded during the Depression to provide insurance for Texans, right? But then this marketplace got cluttered, really cluttered. What is fun about selling insurance? So they reinvented the whole idea. They turned the insurance agency on its head. Oh, I'm standing right in front of this, sorry. The insurance business on its head. And they've got these celebrity characters or characters that have become celebrity icons. They reinvented their story. This little guy has become a spokes character. Yes, I know he's not real, but he's become a spokes character for wildlife conservation and he goes to zoos and museums. So I just, it's one of those great reinvention stories. So for your story, we talked about passion. It needs to be genuine. We as consumers know when you're trying to fake us out. Don't try that. It's genuine, what from the heart. It's an emotion, we'll talk about emotion in a minute. But this company actually, Steve mentioned earlier, and we do some work for them, and we really like their example of their emotion, their passion, their commitment. For Earth Tech is, they are outdoor enthusiasts who love the planet, and they want to make it a, a healthier, more sustainable place to live. They're outdoor enthusiasts, but they're also clothing people. So they blended the two, and now they're committed to change by making clothing out of recycled and sustainable products. So it's just, and their commitment goes from beginning to end, top to bottom, and it's really a cool story in New Hampshire. Emotion, emotion like passion, it drives this. It's why, you know, it's why I get up here and I talk about, I love talking about my company. I'm not going to do that today, but it's that emotion. This example, whoops, sorry. So we're going to talk about him too. This example, like the insurance company, turned this industry on its head. They, you know, and interesting, they started in Texas. I don't know what it is about Texas, but, and their premise was to create an affordable air travel for Texans. Well, now they're the largest, most profitable company, one of the largest, most profitable airlines in the world. But, look at this, their premise was about love and people first. Even their street address is love. It's a great story. And if you go, if you read their posts from their customers, of course, there's always people that have bad airline experiences. It doesn't matter who you are. But they continue to spread this culture of love and people first. It's a great story. There's a great book on the founder, and the book is called Nuts, and it's just awesome. <laughs> Believe. Your belief in your product, your business, your service is a key element to your story. So you've got the passion, the emotion, if there was a need to fulfill, and it's a belief. And this, of course, because I'm in the creative business, we can't talk about a great story without talking about this. They're just independently driven, unbelievably creative. There are computers and then there are apples, and that's the way it's been. Great story. Just head down, take a risk. There is some element of fun in every single story. I would be challenged not to find a little bit of fun in your story. And people love fun. You know, storytelling is about that emotional connection and everything's fun. And again, an old example. But if you look, I mean, truly, let's go back to the beginning of time. What is fun about a patty between two pieces of bread? There isn't anything fun about that. But they made it fun. Interestingly enough, though, after 48 years, the giving of the food because he represents, he, like he's real, like the lizard, I know he's not. Um, <laughs> the giving and the food, because he represents the unhealthy aspects. And interesting, I was reading an article about they're trying to compete with Starbucks. So McDonald's is renovating the restaurants and going more with that whole cafe thing. I, well, whatever, I probably wouldn't go there. Um, and then if you're lucky enough to be born out of fun, that's always good too. 
So, your story. Keep it short, sweet, to the point, and it needs to be very easy to tell. You know, we love to tell about our history and our four generations of founders and the people that are involved, but it's short and sweet and compelling. It's the reason the consumer's gonna walk across the street, and it's easy to tell. It's easy to tell because it's real. Keep it real, keep it genuine. A couple of quick examples here. Um, once you've got your story, and this is the kind of thing that you put together in short, sweet, be your story. Everything you do, everything, shout it. Your colors, your words, your photography, be your story. Live, breathe, be your story 100%. This is one of my favorite little stories about a little two people in a cafe in Cambridge who created a car sharing company based on the fact that there were too many cars and they wanted to make transportation easy to the masses. Are you familiar with Zipcar? It's awesome. Every, their product is their story. Everything they've done is Zippy. The name, the colors, the promotions they run, the type of cars they do. And they started, they were Washington, Boston, New York, and now they're across the country, and I just love their story. This doesn't need any explanation, great story. We did, looked at an interesting example last night, how many times Pepsi has changed their logo, and how many times Coke has, Coke hasn't. And Pepsi's changed theirs was 20 some odd times. Coke is doing better. <laughs> Bad story when we talk about McDonald's and unhealthy. My four year old looked at this slide last night and he goes, Oh, that's a Diet Coke bottle. Oh, no. <laughs> Yay, that's not good. I probably shouldn't share that in public. And this, <laughs> um, this I don't, this is a, an example of a skier out west. It's called Mammoth. And they're premise, they're big, it's about the skiing, it's about the snow. Now, as business owners, we tend to overcomplicate our stories. I talked about short and sweet. How much shorter and sweeter could this get? It's a big board, but let me tell you, they made an investment. It's a big board that's painted white, but they paid big bucks for that extension up there. But look how simple it is. You look at that and get it. Okay, there's stories about the skiing and riding. All it is. Awesome. And then here, this summit, all of the things you're learning that I'm learning, this is where your story starts. Storytelling is about a conversation. This is, social media is born on conversations and storytelling. So start here today. This is your story. This is so exciting. And this I have to share. Because when we talk about stories, and you can't see it yet, but you will, and I don't know if you have seen this, this was a full page ad on the back of Rolling Stone recently. That's all it was. Again, simplicity and a great all-time timely story. That's all it was. That's the story. Oh, if we could all have a story like that, that lives on. We're big Apple fanatics. <laughs> um, so anyway, at the end of the day, when you write your story, either do it at a, over a cup of coffee early in the morning or a glass of wine at night. Just sit down and write your story and have fun with it and reach back into that genuine place, the passion, the I love what I do and let me tell you why. And that's what great fearless storytelling is all about. So thank you. Any questions? before lunch. So <laughs> I'm going to be around for lunch in this afternoon. I'm happy to talk to anyone about storytelling. So thank you very much.